when we evaluate definite integrals, keep in mind that what we're trying to do is evaluate the area between a curve and the x-axis on some set interval. So one method for doing that is drawing rectangular regions and using those as an approximate. The more rectangular regions we use, the better our approximation becomes. But if we're only using a finite number of rectangles, you can even still see some little gaps in there, some areas that aren't included. So to really get the exact answer, what we need to do is consider an infinite number of subintervals. So we need to consider finding the area of those rectangular regions as the number of rectangular regions approaches infinity. Mathematically, we can do that. And in a course for majors, we would go through that process and demonstrate that. For this course, though, we'll just jump straight into the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is an incredibly powerful theorem, which is going to not only allow us to evaluate definite integrals, but it's going to unite derivatives, which has been one of our primary topics this semester, with integrals, which is going to become our primary topic for the next portion of the course. So to evaluate definite integrals, we're going to use this theorem that, again, is going to unite integrals and derivatives So even though we've moved on from derivatives, we're never really done with any prior math concepts. So if some function f of x is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, then we can evaluate the definite integral of that function evaluated from a to b as capital F of b minus capital F of a where capital F is the antiderivative of lowercase f. So this means, essentially, to evaluate a definite integral, we can do that by first finding the antiderivative of the given function, so of our function lowercase f of x. So we find that antiderivative, which is capital F of x, and then evaluating the antiderivative at both a and b, and then finding the difference of those two results. So this very powerful formula, or theorem, is our shortcut for not having to go through the steps of finding the area of that infinite number of subintervals, or that area of those infinite number of rectangles all added together. Goes back to the idea of indefinite integrals, but once we have that indefinite integral, we simply plug in two values, evaluate the function at those two values, and take the difference of those two results. Keeping in mind then that once we evaluate this, this result is going to be a number. So it could be a positive number, a negative number, a decimal, a fraction. But the end result is going to be just a single number.